Hello everyone, Robert Rambles here, and welcome back to World of Warcraft Classic Hardcore and our solo self-found Forsaken Priest run. Thank you guys so much for being here today. I do appreciate it, and I hope you are all doing well. A little bit of housekeeping as we start things off. We did hit level 6. I turned in the Priest Breadcrumb upstairs. That dinged us. We got Smite, rank 2. And we got Power Word Shield. So that's going to be really crucial in both cases. More damage and now the ability to pop a bubble up and take no damage for a little while. Let's run around and we'll pick up the rest of the quest here in town. This had better be good. Remember, patience. Alright, Executor Ziegand is sending us after 10 Scarlet Warriors. Ah, uh, there's a wanted poster here for Maggot Eye. The magistrate has us going after some rot-hide grave robbers. We need eight embalming ickers. Victory for Sylvanas. I used to be very, very familiar. There it is again, that purple orb. One of you guys mentioned in a comment that we might be seeing the orb because we have the buff. The weirdly, we have the Soul of Iron buff. I, I can't remember if my other hardcore characters have this or not. Maybe that's what's causing the orb. One of you guys said that might be the case. It's the second time that I've seen it. I just don't know what causes it to show up. It seems to be a little bit random. You would think if anything you would see it as soon as you log in and then not again, preferably. Uh, I was saying I used to be really familiar with the horde questing, but after spending so much time on the Alliance, both in Hardcore and then once more in Season of Discovery, I don't know these quests as well as I once did. Uh, let's see, there's something down here on the road. That's level 11, so I think we can wait on that. Uh, we should probably head off to the west. Everything is level 6 right now. I feel like we probably want to get to like level 8 or so, and then we're going to zone hop over to Razor Hill and do Razor Hill and Senjin Village stuff. We'll have some lower level stuff down in Senjin Village. Uh, we'll go after Putrid Claws, Doomweed. Well, the Doomweed's going to be to the north, but we should be able to get the Dark Hounds and the Claws out this way. Let's go ahead and refresh Power Word Fortitude. And we're also going to want to farm up some Linen. In fact, we might want to focus on that kind of first thing. There, there's a couple of things that we have to achieve. Uh, we, we need to be finding Greens or making greens, because we really have to get our enchanting up as soon as we can, and the only way to get enchanting up is to disenchant greens, or better. So I feel like working on tailoring is going to be a really big priority for me here. Now again, if you're just tuning in to this series here in this episode for whatever reason, uh, we are running with a few additional rules. We are doing solo self-found, so we're not going to be grouping up with other players at all. We are also crafting our own equipable gear, so for any of the slots that we can tailor, the rule is that we have to make them ourselves. This obviously does not apply to things like rings, weapons, trinkets. Only the slots that we can craft for. So it's, it's kind of crucial that we level up tailoring for two reasons. One, we're going to need upgrades, and two, we're doing enchanting for the lesser and greater of magic wands. These guys here might be a decent low-level linen farm to, to get us going a little bit. They're not going to drop a ton, but they, they do drop some. And we also need seven putrid claws, so let's get the putrid claws and maybe we'll farm these guys for a little bit, depending on how much linen that they're dropping.
Now you might ask, Robert, why are you melee attacking so much? Uh, if it's not super obvious, I'm, I'm melee attacking to be mana conservative. I am trying to make sure that we don't have to spend... I would rather spend time meleeing down a mob than sitting and drinking. I know that, you know, the time trade-off is probably pretty close. You could argue that it potentially it could be faster to blast the mob down, blowing all of your MP just to sit for a few seconds and drink, as it is to, you know, fire off a few spells and then melee to conserve mana. It might be the same amount of time. For me, it feels better that I'm spending the time in combat and not spending the time sitting on the ground. So for me, it's like a momentum thing. I like to keep momentum going on a character. I like to be able to go from pull to pull. Now, once we get a wand, that's not going to be a problem. We're going to go into wand spec in the discipline tree. And our wand is going to be really, really powerful. We're going to be really powerful. And we're not going to take a lot of damage due to power or shield. So eventually, we will have momentum. And we will have a pretty high kill rate. Uh, we'll also be benefiting from spirit tap to regenerate mana. So the good thing about the priest is the priest gets like so much better incrementally over time. Like every step of the way, the, the priest is always getting better. Especially for a hardcore challenge, they're a very good class. In my history with hardcore, I've lost two priests. One of them was level 25 and fell down the elevator shaft in Undercity. So we are going to be paying special attention on this character to make sure that doesn't happen again. And the second was a human priest who died around level 20, actually to Morladim in Duskwood. So yeah, and I guess the horde equivalent of that would probably be like a Son of Aragal situation. So we'll have to keep our eyes open for that as well. Neither priest has died under normal circumstances. So I'm hoping that our priest here will have a, a nice, long, healthy lifespan. Oh, I also picked up a priest quest that I just untracked. Uh, this quest, we need to find Death Guard Kel and heal his wounds using Lesser Heal Rank 2. Afterwards, grant him Power Word of Fortitude and then return to Dark Cleric Barrel. Uh, this is similar to the Guard Roberts quest in Stormwind. So I have no idea where this guy's at, but uh, I'm, I'm assuming that once we clear some objectives off the map by completing other quests, it'll become apparent.
Uh, these guys are not really dropping linen as consistently as I'd like to see. We might have better luck with linen off of some of the Scarlet guys once we're fighting them. Uh, we have 10 Scarlet warriors we're eventually going to be going after. But uh, we'll, we'll keep farming here. We're not done with the quest yet. Thankfully, it is a little bit of a slow drop rate, which benefits us when we're trying to farm.
right, what we'll do is we'll go, we'll do a little bit of tailoring. We'll make some bolts. Uh, we could do that right over here, actually. And then we'll go looking for some dark hounds and start working on some of the other quests. Uh, we'll have plenty of opportunity to kill humanoids uh, with all the scarlets and humans here, so. Hoping that linen will be plentiful. Let's have a look. Now, it's obviously going to be a little while before we can get into making green, so there's probably mathematics behind exactly how much linen you need to be able to make the greens you need to disenchant to get what you need <laughs> to skill up enchanting to make your lesser magic wand. There's probably like an exact number. If I had to guess, the number is probably like 60 to 80 linen. So we're going to have a, a while to go no matter what. I'm not going to bother making anything right now. We'll, we'll just keep making bolts for a little bit. Uh, and we'll save up some mats, and then we'll kind of go from there. Let's sell all the junk we don't need. Definitely going to keep the health pot. Do not seek death. Mm, I don't really want to go too far to the west. I feel like the enemies out there were a bit of a higher level. Let's see. Yeah, level 8. Maybe I'd be better off going to the east instead. I'm not really sure. But we should probably investigate you know, in an effort to stay safe. Having an enemy that's two levels above you is really not what you want, especially at a lower level. Uh, it's easy in that situation if you aggro another enemy to get overrun. We will definitely go ahead and pop the Scroll of Spirit. It's very nice. Alright, we got level 9 bats, we got level 8, we got level 7. It feels like, you know, they're just basically the same level everywhere we look. Gotta keep our eyes open. Without nameplates on, you know, depending on where you fixate on the screen, it can be it's really easy to run right into enemies. Alright, yeah, we're already cutting this way too close. Yeah, we, we nearly had to pop our potion there. Um, I'm really thinking whether or not I just want to head to the Valley of Trials. Uh, and maybe we put in a level back that way and do some of the early Senjin Village stuff and kind of get ahead of the leveling curve. I typically don't do like the super starting areas, like when I zone hop, usually I would go right to Razor Hill, right to Senjin. But now I'm kind of thinking may maybe that level or half a level even that I get out of Valley of Trials could be worth it, I'm not sure. Um, because a lot of these enemies here are just like a very high level for the quest, unless we can find some back this way. Yeah, okay, okay, so level 6. Maybe the trick is that we, we do need to head to the east and not to the west. Maybe that's the trick. We'll try to stick it out for now and uh, see how it goes. I'd rather not have to do Valley of Trials. I'd rather wait till level 8. 
start working on Sentient Village and Razor Hill, but if we keep having close calls like that, I won't really have a choice.
Well, let's go ahead and grab a drink here. Alright, so that's all the Darkhound blood we need. Nothing else going around on right around in this area. To do anything else, we have to head out to the far west or to the north of town. So for now, I think when we turn these in, that will ding us level 8. And then we kind of have to decide whether that might be a good time to take ourselves over to Duratar. I think that it will be. I think that would be a good time to go over to Duratar and start doing some of the things out of Razor Hill and mainly Senjin Village. Uh, is that the right boat, and am I going to make it? I don't know if this is even the right boat. Let's... Well, I guess I really... don't have a way to know. I don't think that it is. I didn't realize you couldn't mm, talk to these guys. In classic era. Huh. Okay, yeah, I'm pretty sure the lower dock... Is the uh, Zeppelin we need? Yeah, see, Ogre, Ogremar. Okay. Yeah, this this is the Ogremar dock. Don't want to end up in Gromgol.
Well, there's our purple orb again, just kind of floating on in to check in with us. It's got to be because of one of the buffs. I think you guys are right. You know, I really should make a pit stop in Ogremar for enchanting. I could also... Well, I don't think I'm going to grab first aid, actually. I'll grab enchanting, cooking, and fishing. So that we have all that stuff going on. Uh, when we'll have time to fish? I'm not sure. We might have to carve out some like specialty time uh, to get some fishing in. We're definitely going to want to fish because we have uh, you know, the self-imposed rule. We can only cook or we can only eat our own cooked food so fishing is going to be an easy way to level up cooking we'll definitely want to do it but yeah i think this is going to be a good place to take a little bit of a break for today guys i am trying to keep these episodes around 30 or 40 minutes for uh just a general digestibility and if you guys are really digging the series then i don't mind cranking out a, a couple of them every day so let me know what you think i would love to hear from you thank you guys again for being here and for all the support truly do appreciate it until next time take care of yourselves out there and take care of each other and we will see you back in azeroth again very soon bye for now